Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're new around here, here's what you need to know. I have a studio location in Forest City, North Carolina. I have a website called offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and I currently have a lot of videos here on the channel because I've been on YouTube for about the last 10 or 11 years. So make sure to take a look around the channel. I am so glad you joined me today because I'm going to be showing you a project that I actually taught in September of 2022 on my Facebook page. I know a lot of you aren't on social media or Facebook, so I thought it would be a great time to show you this project because I used a mix, a seed feed mix in the project. Now, I'm becoming a lover of mixes right now. It seems like that's all I love to work with. Um, I just came out with a beautiful new green mix just in time for St. Patrick's Day. This one is called um, Green Fields. And then I thought I need a new mix for this bracelet because if you have been around my channel anytime since September, you've seen me wear this bracelet right here. This bracelet was made with the Autumn Mix, and that's why the pattern is actually called the Autumn Wrap Bracelet, because it uses the Autumn Mix. Now, my bracelet actually broke this week. I'm going to show you what happened, and I'm going to see if we can fix it so I can show you how to fix your bracelet should it ever break, because I've literally worn this just about every single day since September of 2022. So I made a new mix, beach vibes. I wanted something to wear for the spring. This one has beautiful um, like mints and really light pinks and creams and sand color. So I can't wait to show you what that one is going to look like. Now, if you don't have a mix, it's completely okay. You can use whatever you have. It can be Delicas, it can be uh, any brand of seed bead, Toho, Mayuki, Preciosa, whatever you have that you would like to use, all right? So that's basically what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a mix or a bead or whatever you want. And I can't really tell you how many grams you're gonna need because it's gonna depend on if you make just like a single bracelet or if you make like I've got this one as a double wrap bracelet but you can make it as big as you want it or as long as you want it so I can't really give you a gram amount because everybody's is going to be different you're going to need about four to six yards of your favorite thread today I'm going to be using the size six gray in the dragon thread okay but you can use your 1g ko fire line whatever you have that you want to use. And then you're gonna need your favorite size beading needle, a size 10 or a size 12, 11, whatever you have is going to work. And then a clasp of your choice. So let's go ahead and learn this new bracelet and figure out how we're gonna fix the one I've got. All right, so I have my needle threaded with two yards of thread and you can see here I have my, my mix laid out. And to start, I'm going to pick up three beads. Now, just like on the this bracelet that I have on, and you can see right there, that's why it's driving me crazy. This is where a bead busted, and um, it looks like a hot mess. So, I got to figure out how to fix that. So, But you notice, I picked them up in a random order, and that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to pick these up randomly. So, the first thing I have, like I said, three of my beads... I'm gonna pull these down and make sure I leave myself an eight to 10 inch tail thread. That tail thread is going to be added, um, used for the clasp, so make sure to keep it. So I have my three beads and I'm gonna pick up a, one bead. I skip one bead, but this time I'm gonna go through two beads. So I skip one and I go through two beads here. I'm gonna hold on to those beads so they'll stay in place and when I pull the thread this is what I want it to look like I want two beads stacked on top of each other and then I want two beads like this I'm gonna pick up one bead and I'm gonna work back in the other direction so I thread on a bead I skip the bead that my thread is currently coming out of which is this end one right here and I go through two beads. So I'm going to go through the middle bead and then the lower bead here. So not the upper bead that I just added. 
not this silver one or purple one, whatever, but the one below it, okay? So middle and bottom and pull it through. So when I pull this through, it should now look like a little letter I or a little barbell or whatever you wanna call it, okay? This is what we should have so far. Now the next step to get into position is I'm gonna go through the bead right above where my thread's coming out. So right here is where my thread's coming out and I'm gonna take my needle and go right through the bead above it. I'm gonna pick up one bead and I'm gonna go through the next bead sticking up, which is the one there on the end and pull it through. So at this point, here's what I've got. Okay, I pick up one bead and I skip the bead that my thread is coming out of. So I skip this end bead right here. And then I'm gonna go through two beads. I'm gonna go through the bead I just added and then that little purple bead right under it. Hold those beads in place and pull the thread. Okay. Now I pick up one bead and the same thing. I'm going to skip the bead that I'm coming out of and I'm gonna take my needle and go through two beads. So I'm gonna go through the middle bead and then the lower bead, which is gonna be that one right there. So what we're doing is an odd count peyote, but we're kind of doing our own little version of odd count peyote. So now I come through the bead right above where my thread's coming out. And now I'm in position to start the next row again. So how I do that is I'm gonna thread on one bead and go through the very next bead sticking up. Now I thread on one bead and I go through two beads. So I'm gonna skip the one I'm coming out of and I'm gonna go through two beads. So the one I just added and the one here on the end. Pick up one bead, skip the bead you're coming out of, and then go through two. So I'm going through two at a diagonal. So one and two, just like this. Pull it through, and then go through the bead right above where your thread's coming out. So I hope that you're kind of starting to see the pattern. So we're gonna pick up a bead and go through the bead sticking up. So that's our first, like our first row, I guess you could say. All right, then for the next row, we pick up one bead, go through two. So I skip the bead I'm coming out of, and then I come through the next two beads here. And then I pick up one bead, skip the bead that I'm coming out of, and I go through two beads at a diagonal. So one and two and pull it through. And now I'm ready to add the one bead, but before I can do that, I've got to step up through the bead right above where my thread is coming out there so that you can see this is what we've got so far. So now again, I pick up one bead and I come right through the next bead sticking up. Pick up one bead and I skip one, so I'm skipping the one I'm coming out of, and I go through two, pick up one bead, skip the bead I'm coming out of, and then I go through two, kind of at a diagonal here, pull it through, and then I do my little step up, which is I'm gonna come through the bead right above where my thread's coming out, which is that bead right there. And then again, we're just back to the repeat again. So it's pick up a bead, go through the next bead sticking up, pick up a bead, go through two beads. So I skip the one I'm coming out of and I go through two Pick up a bead, 
skip the bead I'm coming out of, and again, go through two. Now these, remember, I'm not going through the upper one, I'm going through the lower there. And then I'm gonna step up by coming through the bead right above where my thread's coming out. Pick up a bead, go through. Pick up a bead, go through two at a diagonal. Pick up a bead, skip the bead I'm going coming out of here, and then I'm gonna go through two at that, that diagonal, but make sure these are these two and not this one and this one, or it's not gonna work out right. When we do this step, we're building these two beads here at the top to just pop one bead in. So that's why we are adding those beads the way that we are. So what you're gonna do is you are going to continue this until you reach the length that you want. And then I'm gonna show you how to put the clasp on. So I've got just a little bit of tail thread left here. And you can see out of my two yards of thread, I was able to do exactly six inches of this beadwork. Now that is if I left the eight to 10 inch tail thread here. Now, the one thing that is a little bit hard about this project, um, and it's not even really hard, it's just the fact that it's really hard if you get finish off this thread without adding your new thread first, it's really hard to tell exactly where you should be coming out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle off of my short tail thread and I'm gonna leave that thread in place. And then I'm gonna cut myself a new two yard piece of thread here. Now it looks like I got a <clears throat> spot there, so let me get that off. Okay, so I've got my new piece of thread and when I thread the needle, I'm only going to thread through about an inch and a half of the thread, at most two inches, okay? You don't need a long section there. And I'm going to take the needle and right here where my tail thread is at, I'm going to take the new working thread and I'm going to go through the opposite direction so that when I stitch this new thread in, it'll be exactly where it needs to be to start the thread. So you can see here, I'm only gonna pull through about six inches, and then I'm going to follow the thread path of my piece. Now I can kind of go in at diagonals if I want to, like this. Um, if you have a spot where you feel like, hey, that's a little loose, you know, you can go through and loosen that up. The thing is, you're just going to go through your beads in different directions. It doesn't matter how you go through them as long as you don't see the thread, okay? That's your biggest thing. You don't want to see any thread where you've stitched, like across a bead or something to that effect. So basically, I'm just gonna stitch this thread in. Okay, you can see it getting shorter here. Every so often, I'll lock it into place. Here we go. And once you can kind of tug this short thread and this long thread not move or vice versa, then you're good to go. That is stitched in and you're not gonna have any issues with it. So you cut it however you want. I'm gonna use my little thread zapper. You can use your scissors. Again, use what you feel you want to do. Okay, so my new thread is exactly where it should be, okay? So my new long thread is right here, exactly where it needs to be. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread the needle back onto my short thread, my short little tail thread, and I'm gonna do it exactly like I just did with this new thread. I'm going to stitch through to lock the thread in place and get rid of the thread. Because like I said, if you don't do it this way, and you choose just to, you know, finish this off, you're gonna have a really hard time trying to figure out where in the world that thread needs to be. So if yours is a little bit shorter, you may just kind of have to work right here 
you know, along the top or something, just depending on how much thread you actually have left. <clears throat> but you just want to do it until you know that it's secure. Like you, you're fine and know that it's not going to come out. Because anywhere that you put a knot in this piece, you're going to see it. And you don't want that. So I'm pretty confident that this is not going to come out. And it's not going to come apart. So if I can get through that bead there. There we go. Then I'm going to get rid of that thread as well. And again, use what you want. Cut it. Hit it with your zapper. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so I have six inches complete. So of course, if I have added the same amount of thread, it's going to double this now. And you're just going to continue to work until you get that length, adding thread as needed. So as you can see, I have my bracelet to the size that I want. And I am coming out here at the very end of the little row that I finished off. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can finish off the ends of your bracelet. Now, feel free to do whatever you want. Whatever floats your boat, I'm just giving you a suggestion. All right. So what I'm going to do is coming out of this end right here, I'm going to pick up three of my beads. I'm going to let these drop down. I'm gonna pick up one part of my clasp and then I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come back down through the third bead that I added. So when I pull this through, the ring itself is going to be held in place. And then I'll pick up two beads and come back through the last row of peyote that I had here on the end. Okay, at this point, all I need to do is go in now and reinforce this as many times as my needle can get through the beads. Okay, so it's completely up to you. And also the size thread that you use will determine how many times you're gonna be able to get through the clasp and the beads here on the end. Okay, so mine is pretty well done. I don't think I'm gonna get through, through that top bead again, or if I do, I will and I'll bust it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thread that I have here and I am just going to stitch it through and get rid of it just like I got through with finished with thread and added thread here. So I have this side complete. I have my needle threaded on the other end and now I'm gonna show you another way that you can add your clasp. So from, again, I'm coming out here at the very end row and all I'm gonna do is thread on two 11s my clasp with that which I've actually put on an oval jump ring here and two 11s and then I'm going to come back through my base three beads again so that it makes a little arch of beads here okay this is just the the two ways I'm showing you here are just two really easy ways where you don't have to use any other size beads or any other special findings or anything like that. It's just really, really simple and basic. But like I said, you know, you can add your clasp however you want to and however you're comfortable with and, you know, all of that. I'm just suggesting, not commanding. Okay, so again, I go through this as many times as I can because if it's like this bracelet, I'm going to wear this a whole lot. So I want to make sure that my stitches are tight and my clasps are really well and secure. And you can see the way I pulled it, the 
jump ring itself will not actually come up and touch the thread. The jump ring is touching the bottom of those beads because I've gone through these beads so many times pulling them tight and that's what I want. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to get rid of this thread and then I'll have this bracelet complete and then I'll be ready to tackle on how to fix this one. Okay, so as you can see, this bracelet is complete now. I love the results of this one. It reminds me so much of the beach and just all these pretty colors. But now I have this sad bracelet that is broken. So you can see right there, what has happened is a bead has busted right here. So repair. I know some people would just say, you know, normally I would just kind of do the whole thing, but this is a long bracelet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut right at the point where it's broke. All right, so I'm gonna cut that right there. Now, I probably will just re-stitch this and not piece this together. When you start piecing these pieces together, it becomes a little bit harder because of the way that they're stitched through. So, what you'll want to do is find yourself a hard stick pin or um, an awl. Like, this is a tulip awl. The cover that I have on it is by Lisa Turin of Lisa Turin Designs. She is in Florida. You can find her online. But you'll want to get yourself a stick pen, anything that's going to be able to kind of withhold some of the stitching. Because what you want to do is you are going to need to take your time and like start pulling out some of your stitches. So you're gonna have to look at where your thread's at because remember, you've done figure eights through these beads. But unless you want to restitch the whole thing, you're just gonna have to be patient and pull a bead at a time out. All right, just like I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna take my time and all I'm doing is I'm kind of grabbing a hold of this last row of beads that I have so that it'll loosen up. And once it loosens up, you'll be able to see where you've got multiple thread passes through a bead and you'll be able to pull that. So I'm gonna pull out several rows. And as you can see, it's this is not a super simple process. So you, you know, you kind of have to decide, okay, am I going to stitch the whole thing over again or what am I going to do? But this is another really, really great thing about this bracelet is that if it's this hard to take out, the good thing is it's probably not going to come apart. Mine is still good. It just busted that bead and I don't like seeing the hole there. So, so I'm keeping the video going just because I want you to see, you know, the work that is going in this to undo it. Okay, there we go. All right, so what I'm probably gonna do, I've taken off, let's see, one, two, three, oh gosh, it looks like maybe three rows. So I'm gonna pull just a couple of more rows out. So that way it'll make these little threads longer here and I can then start a new thread and stitch these through. Okay, so I have pulled out, I ended up having to take out a little bit more because I had stitched through a tail thread in that little section. But you can see here, and I had to be real gentle and kind of, as I pulled out, you can see here 
that I've got a spot here where I'm ready, I believe, to put in a bead right here is where I need to be at. Now, I'm going to, even though my thread is coming out here, I have a feeling that this is a tail thread and not necessarily a working thread that I had. So, I've got my needle threaded with new thread. And I'm actually going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come through this end bead right here, coming towards the center. Nope, nope. I'm going to go away from the center like this through this end bead so that when I do that, my new working thread is will be coming out in the direction I need to add the bead. So let me pull this back through a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hold that short tail thread out of place right now or out of the way. And then I'm going to stitch through, grab a hold of that tail thread, and lock these beads or this new thread into place. And again, I'll know it's good and locked into place when if I pull on this thread, as long as this, my new thread here, as long as this thread and this tail thread don't move, then it's locked in place and good to go. But since I have this short tail thread, I'm just going to keep on stitching it through. until I get rid of more of this thread. Okay. And then I will trim that. Now, I'm going to put my needle onto my working thread. I'm gonna leave this little thread right here for now. Number one, because when I tug on it, it's really tight and the beads aren't moving. But number two, the way that this thread is split in here, it'll be better for me to get a big eye needle to thread onto all of these little ends or these where it's split. It'll do a little bit better if I get a big eye needle to stitch those through. So right here where my needle is coming out, I'm ready to pick up one bead and come through the two beads just like this. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and stitch through the previous row and then reinforce this, this bead that I just added. Since that little thread is so short there, there we go. Okay, and then I'm ready again to just pick up a bead and go through the tooth here at the diagonal. Pick up a bead, go through the two at the diagonal, and then come through the bead right above, just like that. And instead of actually, you know, like I said, trying to piece this piece and this piece together, so instead of piecing it together, I'm just going to stitch these beads here because some of the beads, even though they're perma finish, um, you can kind of see here where some of my beads, the finish is scratching off of them. And it's just because, again, I've worn this every day every single day so i'm just and you see right there how that is so i'm just going to go ahead and restitch this so that then i can i know that it's secure and that um i'm good to go so guys i hope you enjoyed learning how to make this fun and quick bracelet and how to repair it if something happens and it breaks the fun thing that i like about this project is literally out of a 20 gram tube that is all it takes to make one of these bracelets. So it's a really good uh, kind of stash buster to do. If you need a step-by-step -step pattern, I have one available on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. 
You can also click below and look in the video details and you will see links to each thing that I use today. Now, I know I'm going to get the question, can I make it wider? Yes, you can absolutely make this wider. So if you do four beads, then that's just regular even count peyote. If you do five beads, it's just regular odd count peyote. Okay, so just, just know that. It's a really, really fun and quick project to do. And if you wanted to, you could even make some little tiny slider beads to go over it. That might be coming in another future video. So guys, I hope you have a great one. Make sure to come back next week because I have an amazing new earring for you just in time for St. Patrick's Day. So we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.